Yo, what's good, YouTube? We back at it again with another video, and I want to talk really quickly about the importance of financial education, financial uh, literacy, and so forth and so on. And each and every time that I would give you a person, I'd give you a tip uh, to go along with that specific person or something pertaining to the topic. So I definitely advise you, if you can, get a pen, get a pencil, get your telephone out, whatever you need to do. Take some notes. I hope this is something that will bless your life and give you some kind of uh, ideas and maybe, you know, we both could eat, we both can use because these are some really good tips. But anyway, let's get right into it. Financial literacy and financial education is something that we definitely all need to learn as African American males. And I say all of us that think this in a group that we do not understand it, but for those who don't understand it or those who just basically need to, to freshen up or on, on the ideas of financial literacy can definitely use this. Um, um, not only in this video, but use the knowledge that you can find from several different avenues to kind of create something new, use some sense, so forth and so on. But anyway, I want to make the, the video really quickly about um, uh, just what it is. Financial literacy and financial education is knowing uh, how to make moves to prevent, prevent uh, 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 losing what you've made or basically um, how to prepare yourself to another level than the one you're currently at. Um, I can I can go show you the original blog. We made a blog post about this or article at the brownbrother.blogspot.com. I may leave a link in the description box below that you can go check out my original piece that I talked about and wrote about and so forth and so on. Um, but you can look at all these great athletes um, who were just uh, who, who who died poor or are in and been in some very bad financial position, and some who are actually made it out that financial position and are not shy or or, or embarrassed about um, um, sharing what happened, and that they've actually been able to help other people. So like I said again, I'm gonna name some old names, I'm gonna name some new names. So just bear with me. If you may, you're gonna know a couple of them, but maybe not know all of them. Sugar Ray Robinson was a great fighter, maybe the greatest all time, even above Floyd Mayweather. Um, and 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 uh, Sugar Ray died in in not great financial position. Ray Lewis, I mean not Ray Lewis, uh, Joe Lewis, uh, who many uh, a ticket as the greatest heavyweight of all time, other than Muhammad Ali, died in, in some pretty bad financial position. I read his personal autobiography. Um, you just got uh, Joe Frazier, who was Ali's main opponent, the great one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, a financial position. Uh, T.O., Terrell Owens, uh, wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles and the Cowboys, Mr. Get Your Popcorn Ready, saying to have people uh, mess him up out of some bad investments or how, how people were so busy to, as soon as he got something, take their hand out, but as soon as he needs something back, so he was in a bad financial position. Uh, so many of these got 50 cents. Uh, wrote on Instagram with dollar bills, $100 bills broke, but he just turned around and said all the money he used in his videos and so forth and so on, I think. And that he himself is actually broke. I found a very odd and funny statistic. I was watching Birdman interview. Uh, Birdman was the CEO and founder of Cash Money, Young Money, Cash Money Records or whatever. And he was saying, and I quote him verbatim, he was saying, I'm so sick of these youngsters uh, uh, all want to be rappers. They ain't even no money in that no more. That, you know, basically... Um, uh, all the money is inside of owning and being a CEO and, and, and running things and not always in the rap industry. That's Mr. Respect said that. You see what I'm saying? I even uh, looked at Forbes list the other day that said highest paying earned rappers and then had the highest top rapper, which I'm very proud of and hey, very happy to hear about it for that brother, is J. Cole. Like, so again, one of the few rappers that I actually uh, uh, enjoy listening to who's not mainstream, or if he is mainstream, not uh, feeding into the negative stereotypes that they have us in. But anyway, J. Cole made, I believe it was like $7.8 million, maybe a little bit more. And he was the top earned rapper in 2015. So you understand where I'm coming from this, where seven some is not nothing to to, to turn, your, turn your nose up at. And it can change a lot of people's lives. But compared to all these rappers that we talking about, the Bugatti and the this and the that and the so forth, so many two, three million dollar cars. But you can see financially, even on Ford's website, how much they really made. And I believe it's so ironic that I may even do a hip hop decoded, a hip hop tells more truth than I can video, where basically I can look at Ty Dolla Sign, who's another California based rapper, and he and inside his intro to his um, sign language. Mixtape, I believe he did that back in 2012, 2013. He was basically saying that these, you know, what don't know, 
and then he was saying talking about that why they still front uh he was saying that you know uh they still renting cars that lamborghini ain't yours tell me why brother stunt and let me teach you how it's realness over millions you know what i'm saying so he even rappers now and and so far the front runners of the faces of the industry are even calling themselves out or calling the ones out because at the end of the day that's not even where all the money is so like i said again if you like computers over music if you like a a, a chest or, or 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 whatever it can be i mean if you like just uh science over sports there's nothing wrong with you don't fall into the negative stereotype that's been set for us that we have to do this because there's so many opportunities in the world yes yeah, very narrow for the black man how can i put it the opportunities are narrow but the areas are unlimited or are so broad does that make sense to me to you then the opportunities that are presented to us are so narrow, but we carve our own lane and our own avenue. Things are so broad that we can be successful in whatever we want to do. There's a young brother named Tony. Uh, I forget his name, but he's, on, he's always on um, on Shark Tank. It's a, it's a business-related show that comes on uh, uh, MSNBC. And uh, the brother's always um, trying to invest and find new invent, uh, 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 innovation or whatever. And I believe he's making on upwards of eight figures, maybe even more a year, more than any rapper can or is making based off his ideas of innovation. So, so whatever lane you carve, I'm trying to say, there's plenty of opportunities and avenues to do. But before I even get into that rant, uh, let me go ahead and talk about financial education, the importance of it. I can't teach you how to make money. I could show you some ways about how you may be able to be your own boss, be your own person. But at the end of the day, how to make your money is up to you. And how you're going to make your first million, two million, ten million, hundred thousand, ten thousand dollars is basically what you're passionate about, what what you know best, and so forth and so on. So I can't even teach you all that. But what I can teach you is financial education and literacy. And I believe what people forget before they show you how to be the most successful, how to hit your peak of successfulness, people forget to show you before you even get to that what steps you need to take to be financially educated and financially literate. There are a lot of people who made money and lost it. Or there's a lot of people who were not able to get to their peak because they were so ready to get to the top stair instead of being paying attention to the first steps that are in front of you. So the number one thing I tell you to do is just gain knowledge. That's very simple, very easy, but gain knowledge. Watch YouTube videos. I know I talk about myself and I laughed or whatever, you know, uh, talking about I'm going to try to make this video short for y'all. Don't have to watch me all day, you know what I'm saying? And you can kind of go on about your day, but I, I really mean that. Watch YouTube videos. The first man I'm going to give you is Chris Hogan. Uh, Chris Hogan, uh, H-O-G-A-N. Uh, write that name down. That's the very first one. Uh, he's basically a financial expert, a financial coach, teaching how you can retire young, teaching how you can do all these great things, and so forth and so on. And he had a very funny uh, video and article uh, uh, done at uh, Bishop T.D. Jake's church, the Prada's house, where he talked about the story of the $200 pair of jeans and how they had no significance or, or any um, 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 particular uh, value in an everyday life. So I found that just a great video to start off with because it correlates so well into how we spend so much money on tennis shoes. Well, not me. I don't I don't feed into that. But how we spend so much money on tennis shoes and so forth. So on $200, $300. I was watching my boy the other day, CJ So Cool, another YouTuber, a young black male, educated, went to the military, just a smart man. You know, I remember when Essence did an article on, I uh, um, can't remember what guy he did a hashtag, what I find he had some racist comments. Uh, somebody should need to do an article for Father's Day on this brother because he's taking care of three kids um, uh, that, that were, uh, you know, I'm not going to get all into his business, but he's taking care of three kids. They just play like that. He's a real father, real man, great man. But anyway, he wanted something in the machine and he would tell him, like, he would tell him his viewers, like, the tennis shoes cost like $5,000. I said, $5,000 for what? Or five hundred, even for five hundred dollars, for what? For some tennis shoes? Like really? You see what I'm saying? So it has no significance. So even if you do want to buy a pair of joints every now and again, that's great. Or even if you're so intelligent and so smart, you know how to resell tennis shoes on eBay or on whoever, whatever. Then hey, that's a business and a hustle within itself for you. So I tip my hat off to you because you even figure out something that I couldn't figure out. But I'm just saying, if you buying them just for the heck of it, or a lot of Jordan collectors don't even like to get so dirty or whatever, but $200, that's a lot to ask for. And what can else can you be putting that in? It's a great uh, correlation or a great uh, transition to number two. I'm gonna, the name I'm going to give you is Dennis Kimbrough. 
great black man himself. He wrote two books, um, Thinking Grow, Grow Rich uh, for Black People. And then he's also written his newest book, which I had the pleasure of reading, called um, uh, Secret Tips for Black Millionaires. And it's a great book. And in that book, he talked about how we tend to sometimes fall in love with brands, not us as a whole. But I believe it was a J. Cole line inside of a song. He said, um, he said, um, never been a fan of Flash and probably couldn't because I never had it. But if I, uh, I forgot what he said. Uh, but then when I got it, I, I got my little taste of paper. Then I splurged. I guess it's just a, you know what, this just a you know what urge. This is the boondocks. And it's funny because that line is so relevant. And I even believe I used that quote. Uh, inside the blog post because it made me think about like man when we finally when we get to a certain level we like brands and it's not because of us and not because of that we're saying we're just so watered down that we like brands it's because that's what the media and the propaganda chooses to show us you see what I'm saying even back before we even knew it that's what they began to show us that we begin to flaunt our wealth that when we got over here to America we all had nothing but then when a little one or two of us finally made it to the top of the ladder, a lot of us helped. But a lot of things they showed us and they used propaganda to try to get us to, to spin and splurge. And then we thought being a high roller was, you know, I watched an old movie back from the 70s with the Cadillacs and they had them fur jackets and all of them three-piece uh, uh, leather. And it looks so crazy now. But you got to understand it had financial significance because when we could have used that money to own a business or buy a house, we used it on clothes that we can't even wear right now, or that's in the trash, or that's in the Goodwill, or or maybe at some kind of non-black-owned consignment shop somewhere. You see what I'm saying? You, I guess I make the point is, it's not intelligent just to spend your whole life on brands. Does that make sense? And that in Dennis Kimbrough, he was talking in his book, he was saying that black people of all the races are more inclined to buy Mercedes, Lexus, and, and Benz, and BMWs, and so forth and so on. And hey, that's throwing no shade. That's not being bad. If you own it, great. But at the same time, if you spending that but not putting the same amount of effort and money into ways to even grow be above that, that when I walk into the dealership, I just don't want a car. I want the dealership. You see what I'm saying? I want to be in the financial position to buy the dealership. That's always my mindset. If I'm going inside of a store, yeah, I'm buying something to wear, but I'm always in the business mindset that let me buy this shirt for 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 um uh, to try to make a job purpose or uh, I wonder how many how much money it take them to make these shirts and can I go duplicate the same way? This shirt probably called ten cents in China. So what can I do to make a shirt for me to make a big I'm always Will and how to make a business. So at the same time, you got to put those two and two together. You got to put your money where your mouth is, and you got to always feed several and enjoy your personal life at the same time. Invest and make great decisions. So Dennis Kimbrough is a great guy to check out. Number three, I'm telling you about Dr. Boyce Watkins. Like so again, each and every tip and each and every person I mentioned is basically an extension of the last thing that I mentioned. And I was talking about. I would spend $200 in tennis shoes. Now you can do that. Well, how about this? Instead of buying two pairs, buy one pair. There's a great man called Dr. Boyce Watkins. You probably heard me mention him once or twice before. And Dr. Boyce Watkins is a financial expert, financial leader. You can go watch his interview on the Breakfast Club. So even if you don't want to go watch a video on his channel, you can kind of get some of the comedy from watching the Breakfast Club and watching him while he drops some knowledge and spits some knowledge. And he was talking about always on his videos, financial literacy and how to get smarter, how to own a business. He's doing black business boot camps $149 which is cheaper than a lot of them tennis shoes out here in the streets and you can learn some things that you may be able to go use and 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 change the world or at least change your situation you see what I'm saying so for a hundred and fifty dollars you get some knowledge that you can use for a lifetime and put into a bid like saying I can't teach you how to be rich it's passion plus need plus resources, plus everything is how you find a business, how you find a successful business, and you can run it without being bored or tired of it. So anyway, go check out Dr. Boyce Watkins. He teaches a lot of smart classes and so forth. It's another young African-American lady, beautiful young African-American lady. She's, um, I think her name is like Jay Knight. She's offering like a YouTube boot camp, basically, where she's teaching people how to monetize or market their YouTube channel. And she's charging like 20, 20, 20 to $25. That's nothing. That's like a piece of at like uh, Papa John's or something. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of avenues out here that you can use to go and make 
money and, necess and, necess and necessities and make moves that will project you and not just make you look clean for that one day or for that one year, how long the tennis shoe or the car lasts. So that's just a great uh, uh, tip. Number four I want to talk about is a great man as well. His name is Wesley Virgin. And he basically has a lot of classes and teaches you how to be financially wealthy and so forth and so on. Like I said, I made little links. I'm going to try to leave as many links in the description below as possible that I can physically can come up with. Um, you know, it's a little hard sometimes. Sometimes I'll be forgetting who's who and what's what. But um, Wesley Virgin is a great guy to check out. Um, he's, you can see the Lord blessing him in his life. And what he's constantly doing, even from a six-month standpoint, and he teaches you how some of the mental aspects and what you can do. How he goes spends his Saturday and Thursday sometimes, not always in the club, but uh, at at, um, at Barnes and Noble, reading books. You see what I'm saying, and getting some kind of mental wealth out of it. How he goes out there in the street and go feed the homeless, and how that feeds his spirit, and that motivates him because he sees people in an even worse financial position than he is, and he can use that and try to help the world, you know. And you just see a lot of things that he just give you kind of like the spiritual and mental aspects of what you can do to maybe grow better in your life and grow better in your financial position. So Wesley Virgin is another guy to definitely go check out. And number five, uh. It's so many names I could give you, like uh, so many people who are doing it. Um, but I could just tell you, I'm not even give you five. How about this? Here's a little homework for the day. It's not much. You take one click, go on a website, see a lot of stuff, nice stuff, whatever. Go on Amazon.com and Google Black Wealth Books, and you should be able to find a couple. It's not that many at all, unfortunately, but there's quite a few where you can find it, say, Black Wealth Books online. Um, or if you just want a safe search because I don't trust everybody and I want to tell you to put your debit card or credit card information on each and every website. But go check out like an Amazon.com um, and you should listen and should find some other avenues for black wealth. And just read up on it, feed up on it. Oh, you can get another guy, Damon John, Mr. Damon John, uh, creator of FUBU, uh, probably the biggest black owned uh, clothing line ever in the history of America, but he made over $500 million from it, where he was saying uh, uh, he has a new book coming out. So go watch it, Mr. Damon John and on Shark Tank and so forth. And he gets great business ideas and so forth and so on. Just a great man. And, and like I said, again, these are a lot of people where you can learn the financial literacy aspects of an education. And just constantly read and educate yourself on certain things. Like I said, again, I can even give you a couple of tips right now. As you're sitting here right now, Figure out things. Plan your financial things. Okay, say, okay, I'm going to go to lunch break today. Am I going to spend some money? Or I'm going to make me a lunch today. I can save a little money. You see what I'm saying? You $25 at, um, at uh, shoot, I don't know, the Waffle House and it's not going to equivalent that much food uh, compared to going to spend $25 at the grocery store. You can go get you five, six boxes of waffle mix or pancake mix and have you breakfast for the rest of the month compared to you see what I'm saying spending that money at one place you know um even it's a trip that it's a trick that I like to do I got this from one of an uh, elderly family member of mine they used to always take their stuff up so that when they use it they forgot or I, I gotta put a tape a note or put a note on it so they can easily not forget something so take your debit card right now if that's the most used thing you have take your debit card right now um and wrap a piece of paper or a note around it and, and put it on there every time you're about to spend. You can either take it off and tape it right back on. It may look a little weird, but you don't care what people think about you. Go watch CT Flex, the art of and not giving a, you know, what if you need some motivation on how to do some weird stuff and get a little bit better with confidence-wise. But definitely go do this. Uh, get, out your, get out your wallet. Get your debit card out there. Go put whatever money you got, uh, $40 or $20, whatever you got in, on your debit card. Now I want you to tape a note on it. Write on that note, will this purchase benefit me? How? Or even you can write, will this purchase move me on to the next level? What's the potential of this purchase? And every time you're about to use your debit card, when you slide it out your wallet, boom, not only does the debit card come out, but that note come out. Then you can read it. Then when you, I want you to read the note, and then I want you to see what's inside your hands or see what's inside your basket. And if you see anything inside your basket that's not a necessity or you see anything inside your basket that's not going to help you, then don't get it. You see what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be funny. Those pair of tennis shoes, if you got a pair of tennis shoes, you're not going to get and you don't need them. If you already got the, the I watch a YouTuber, he love, he's obsessed with Nike. 
if that if you already got the black and gray Nike, you don't need the gray and white. It's not gonna do anything for you. Or even if you do spend and you love brands, is that a place that you can go and get a little bit smarter? You gotta be smarter with everything you do. I remember when school uh, came uh, uh, around for me, and I had to buy uh, some textbooks. And I was gonna go spend two hundred dollars on textbooks, and then I said, "Why?" I said, "My teacher didn't say we, we had to use the textbooks because for this particular class, I didn't need the little um, package card out of it." So I said, "Why can't I just get it used?" Then I said, "Even greater than that, why can't I just rent it?" So instead of spending two hundred dollars for the books, I went and searched profusely until I went on Amazon.com, the student rent the book or whatever. I got the book for forty nine dollars. Um, free shipping because I am a college student was able to use the college student thing for right now you may have to go use it I'm sorry I got gear a little you know whatever let me tell you something if you got to go use it use a free trial get the free shipping and everything else cancel it but they don't charge that $99 on your card or whatever maybe Amazon Prime whatever you got you know but they won't charge you after that but definitely you know rent textbooks there's a lot of things you can do to save money you see what I'm saying like I said you can go see can you find it cheaper you see what I'm saying if you know you're going to work out it's not going to be that many you know especially at the gym at least at the gym i work at it's not that many decent looking you know so i'm not trying i'm not trying to impress you know no ladies there and not them to be sweaty hot tired and if they do that's the only thing they care about is the brand you're wearing then that person is conceived and you don't need to be with them anyway so i'm just letting you know how i'm just telling you it is what it is i'm just giving you you know game i'm like cali muscle i'm trying to give you billion dollar game you know when you finish working out, have your meals ready for you. You know, boil that rice. You don't have to go out there and go spend five dollars to get a side order of rice and like some chicken for like six dollars. You can go buy your whole chicken and a big old bag of rice for seven dollars and make several meals out of it. Then go into one little place. You see what I'm saying? And not saying that always you're in that predicament of situation where you can avoid spending money. But if you can definitely find a way to save seven dollars here, six dollars there, it always works. I'm gonna give you two more advice because I'm trying to keep it on twenty five minutes because like second I know you don't want to sit up here and listen to me all day. But I'm gonna give you two more advice and listen to these two right here. Use Steve Harvey ten 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 formula where think of a business idea that uh, I think he said is ten dollars. He said um, get ten people to buy it and then uh, find something to make 10 times more than that or something like that. I'm trying to see can I leave the video in the description box below but the 10 so I should go look it up for yourself the 10 10 10 formula on YouTube great formula great advice Um, and the last one I was gonna leave man I forgot just say quick the last one I was gonna leave for something that this one was great I can't remember what what it was uh, if I think about it I may just come back and make a whole video on that but I had um one more uh advice or one more tip and that's and that's killing me because i can't think oh here it is the warren buffett theory warren buffett is one of the top five richest men in the world you know i know a lot of people saying a lot of things about him you know i don't know what else you know they're saying that the politicians and the corporations are destroying america nine times out of ten they are but only thing i can do is just take the 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 little bit of good I can find in everybody because hopefully there is some good in everybody. I'm not sure that you can use that little drop of good. It may be able to change your life. But anyway, this is a tip I want to give you right here. Um, Warren Buffett said, don't never, ever, ever lose money. And when he said that, and I may be giving y'all a billion dollar game right here. So y'all make a book about this. I want my residual. Give me give me my money. Yeah, put some respect on my advice that I'm giving y'all. Come cut me a check. <laughs> anyway, I'm just playing with y'all. But anyway, the number one tip that I want to give you. If you don't listen to nothing else I say, fast forward during the whole video, listen to this tip right here. Never lose more than you make in a day. Does that make sense? If you make three dollars, but then you go and then you go buy two dollars worth of food, you don't lose anything. You made a dollar that day. Does that make any sense to you? If you didn't make no money for that day, or at least average it out where you work in a job where you could say, okay, if I work eight hours a day, one day, two hours a day, I work 10 whole hours that whole week, which is a part-time job, but I go spend more than that $10, a 10, oh, I make, I spend more than I made for that 10 hours on the job, then that's some, a purchase you don't need to make. Or if you got some money saved up, then you can make that purchase. Does that make sense to you? You see what I'm saying? Try to make sure you make money every single day, whether that be a job, whether that be you selling a book on Amazon.com, which I may teach you how to do that on here if you want to learn how to self-publish a book. Never 
if you can, there's going to be some days where you have to because situations happen, you hungry, and they say don't buy food. But if you can, be smart and never, ever, ever spend more money than you make that day. And then you will always be ahead. If you got five dollars, even at, at six years old, your grandmother gave you five dollars. You go buy something that's four dollars. You go buy something three dollars. You got two dollars saved over. You got money left. And like I said again, you do not spend over that in which you made. So that's it, man. I just wanted to make a video real quick. Hopefully these tips help in any kind of way. If there's some other advice you got, leave it down in the comments below. If you need some other advice, maybe I can help. Like I said, you can go check out the article on the Brown Brother at blogspot.com. Like, share, subscribe. Please, we need the support. Thank y'all. I hope y'all have a great day. All right, man. I'm on to the next one.